Hello. Good morning, everyone. Or, or afternoon, afternoon. Or evening. Or, or any, night. Or any other time of day. So we'll just stick with hello. Yeah. I hope you've been enjoying the podcast so far. And today's podcast, we're going to be looking at... Fear. Fear. Yeah. What fear. Are we, what are we fearful of? What frightens us? What stops us doing things that we want to do? And generally spending our time... Especially at the moment, living in this place of fear um, or perceived fear and therefore the reactions, responses, the decisions we take based on being in a moment of fear rather than Mm. being in a moment of reality. Yeah, because it is a worrying time for people at the moment, isn't it? It is, yeah. You don't seem to have any sort of... For a lot of people, there doesn't seem to feel like there's any light at the end of the tunnel at the moment with this whole COVID situation. So we have to accept the tunnel and make the tunnel light and fun and be at peace with being in the tunnel. And for some, just scrabbling their way through the tunnel in desperation to find the light, I guess, is just simply overthinking. And just... If we can be in a place of acceptance of whatever the situation is, then we've got our light with us. We don't have to go and find the light. We've already got it. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's like we said, didn't we? It's like there's a lot of people that are isolated on their own at the moment and they're struggling with their overthinking. Um, Let's face it, all we've got is the news or the internet to give us reports on how the situation is at the moment. Um, and then people are just left with their own minds to have their own conversation with themselves, which can mm. lead to being quite fearful. Whereas yeah. you said, like today, we get to talk about it together, which is great, but also it's not necessarily the best thing either, is it? No, because if you if there's two of you that are getting into that place of fear, then what you do is you end up talking about that place of fear, both of you, and you come to this conclusion of fear of worry and there's two of you so it's really powerful um on a negative sense it's really powerful but it does have the the turnabout to be able to talk about it and Mm. sort of come to that realization hang on we're basing all our fear on something we've seen written down on the internet or a reporter saying something so like what what sort of things are people fearful of at the moment, Matt? What do you feel? I know what I feel people are fearful of. I know one of the things is the dreaded vaccine that a lot of people are worrying about. Yeah, very much, and and quite understandably so. And I think it's important for us not to get into fear and worry about it, but to look at it on a factual way and go with our, our gut instinct on it. And I think... There's a lot of conflicting information at the moment there's a lot of scaremongering and there's a lot of lemming behaviour where everybody just goes with what they read so therefore that's the fact but what have people what else have people got to go with that's the thing isn't it well this is it and I think the question that I always ask myself when I get into this overthinking about stuff or what's the future going to be like there's a couple of things one none of us know what the future is going to be like full stop no so it doesn't serve me in any way shape or form to get concerned about the future because all i've got is here and now and today Mm. not all i've got what i have got absolutely is here and now today we 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 don't know what tomorrow is going to bring so we live for today and that's for a lot of people that's quite a difficult thing to take on board it's easy for us to say our mindset is we live for today absolutely but we get into we get into that place where we're thinking just where we're worrying about what's going to happen if we can't you know get back out to work and if we can't do this and if we can't do that the thing is what none of us have got right here in this moment is any proof of the scenarios that we come up with in our mind so or what we read Exactly. To a lot of extent, where's the proof? Where's with that? the proof? It, you know, just because it's been said by somebody doesn't mean it's true. And this is how I look at it. That there's a lot of worry. There's a lot of worry around 
Um, for instance, what we've just mentioned, the, the whole vaccine mm. situation. There's pros and cons to it. Obviously, people want to stay safe. People want to get back out to work. People want to start living their lives again, mm. you know, just as, as we've been used to doing for so many years. This is really difficult. It feels like the brakes have been put on to a mm. grinding halt for so many people. And, you know, Matt, as you know, Look how many people are losing their businesses. Look how many people are getting into really bad mental health situations. Mm. It's it, affecting their relationships with family, friends, it their own is. children. And I think, oh yeah, it's a it's it, worrying. It's such a difficult one because when you break it all down, the fact that the brakes have gone on and then we start to experience things that we've not experienced before mm. kind of suggests to me how I how it seems to me anyway a lot of that is that it's actually highlighting stuff that was already there mm. but we were distracting ourselves by working for 12 14 hours a day running around like headless chickens um just to get through life and what the breaks going on has done has enabled us Will put us in a situation to stand and look in the mirror and go okay because it's so easy to suddenly become ungrateful and to see how bad everything is when we're stood in a situation where actually we have got everything that we need we're just unable to do what we want and we have to find trust we have to find in ourselves in our own spirituality somewhere some place where we can come to trust and just feeling genuinely inside everything will be all right one way or another now from a spiritual point of view where I work or where we both work from it's a lot easier in my mind to accept the situation at the moment as this is how it is this is a hurdle that's presented it's a pretty horrific hurdle for a lot pretty of people big one. because a lot of people have died because of the mm. the virus um, again, it's what we're reading. We're reading statistics. We're reading all of this. You know, it's not that we're doing this to scaremonger people. We're actually fighting against being fearful, aren't we? Yeah. By letting that go. You're here in the moment. You're alive. You're breathing. Mm. You've got the brakes grinding to a halt. You're not able to do a lot of the things that you were able to do a year ago. Which equally also means you are now able to do a lot of the things that you weren't able to do or a year didn't have ago the time to because do of before. time restraints and pressures put on by work and this that and the other. So of course it it all turns round and you know what on one hand seems um, difficult and a challenge when you turn it round you've just got a different set of difficulties and challenges. And so there's many people out there that would be never had time to themselves, never had time for the family, never had time to do anything. Well, now time for a lot of people is something that we've all got masses of, or it appears we've suddenly got masses of. But let's face it, time hasn't changed. What we're doing has changed. Time is going just as fast or as slowly as it always has done. Mm. But what we do on a daily basis, how we distract ourselves on a daily basis has stopped. You know what, Matt, that's true. And it, but, it, but it is a difficult, you know, I, I, I'm on the fence here a little bit because it's, it's a difficult, I do see it from people's point of views. It's a difficult situation. We're surrounded with news and media hyping up whatever it is that they want to hype up to get into our minds to believe. It's difficult in society with all the social media platforms out there. It's really difficult sometimes to make your own judgments yeah. and your own decisions on things when it feels like the majorities are going for something against perhaps what you'd feel. Mm. Um, we get kind of brainwashed into it. And from a spiritual point of view, we have to understand we are always, always all right. Mm. You know, nothing ends anything. It's just what we perceive as ending. Yeah. And also... Becomes our truth. 
but we're so much better than that as a human being. Mm. We've got so much more capabilities of understanding. We've got a fantastic brain that we can be using to make our own decisions. We shouldn't be sucked into what the media says. We shouldn't be sucked into countlessly watching the news and letting that go in, which is just reaffirming, you know, the problems going on out there, which ultimately affects our spirituality. Mm. You know, from a spiritual point of view, spirit, the energy, that we are all part of, carries on. This is just our human Mm. side that's actually getting pulled into all this worry. And I know it's real. I believe it's real. There is a virus out there causing destruction, ruining people's lives, ruining Mm. everything for them. But nevertheless, they're still all right, ultimately, from a spiritual Mm. point of view. That sounds harsh, but I believe that. I I completely agree with you. And I think there's... A couple of points. One is that even though to us as humans it seems so destructive and and which it is, mm. it's destructing life as we know it. It's destructing life that humans have made and the way that we want it to be. From a universal point of view, it's absolutely perfect exactly as it is because it is. Mm. And that can be Always is. really hard to get your head round because... When things seem to be so negative, it's like, well, how is that perfect? Well, it has to be perfect because it is. Well, it, and it, 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 yeah, it, you know, it's like, um, everything that happens in the universe, it's, it's a lot of it is influenced by humans, and eventually, Mother Earth then takes control and puts things back into a more balance. But, like with everything. You know, we've been through some world wars and I would imagine that in the world war that, okay, what was it, 1939 to 45? Six years of war mm. of people living on rations and, and in a in horrendous situations. Look where we've come from then. Everything is um, fluid. It, you know, hard times get better, better times get harder. Mm. So what feels now in this moment like the most difficult hard time before we know it we're going to look back and go gosh that was a hard time and look how far we've come since then much like i kind of look at it that you know when the kids were born and you know you're up every couple of hours through the night and you're like oh my gosh is this ever going to end i'm so tired um blink I, i can't remember that's so long ago now yet it's gone so quickly the kids are older now so i can kind of relate to that does, with, with that makes with, sense with finley at the moment the puppy oh gosh you yeah. know i feel like i'm a, a new parent <laughs> i um, didn't i didn't think that cleanup operation was ever going to have to end <laughs> yeah he wasn't well for a while and it was difficult but you know what look at the look at what we can bring into our lives yeah. that actually just just makes us i don't know it just enriches our lives like for me in lockdown i've struggled with it i've struggled with it you've struggled with it absolutely i'm not going to say i haven't no absolutely we're human beings and and it's okay to just accept sometimes that you are going to worry about things but worrying about things and becoming fearful of things is a completely different thing you Mm. can worry about things but you don't let it take over your life to the point that you become so fearful that you don't exist anymore yeah I think that that's the thing. I, yeah, I agree. Having Finley has been wonderful. It's been nurturing. It's been lovely to bring some more love into the house. You know, something to care for. Um, a, a, an animal to take care of has been really good for my mind. Really good yeah. for my, my mental health in, in this situation. What hasn't been good for my mental health is social media, is, is reading the news, watching the news, with all this conflicting information firing back and forth, saying this is a good thing to do, this isn't a good thing to do. These are the death rate numbers today. Horrific. You know, this is how it compared to this time last year. Blah, blah, blah. And it's just conflicting information coming in that my brain just doesn't want to even try to work out. I just step away from it and go back to the things that, to me, really matter. Mm. Keeping safe. Absolutely. Because there is a virus out there. So keeping safe, that's the starting point. Yeah. Keeping, 
and and just being grateful for what we've got in our lives taking this opportunity you know to communicate with friends more getting in touch with people more okay we can't visit people like we were able to but we we've got other platforms you know zoom's fantastic for this you know you've got messenger you've got ways to do it i've even mm. started just sending voice messages to people now yeah because and and the feedback what what comes back from people is oh it was so nice it felt like you were in the room it was lovely and i feel the same you feel the same when people do that hear somebody's it's, voice Hearing someone's mm. voice at this time is so nice. It's so nice. Leave the messages and the texts, you know, to another point when we're back in the a world where everything's moving again. Yeah. But it's nice sometimes to say, you know what, there are other things we can be doing at the moment that can make a difference. And sometimes, Matt, it can be as simple as just sending someone a voice message so uh, they hear a real yeah. voice. And you know what? It's, I think... You know, I feel very fortunate that we're in a situation that, you know, we have got the animals to look after. We have we have to get up in the morning and look after the animals because they rely upon us. And equally serve so, so many people listening to Yeah. Us. So, you know, even when you're lying there thinking, I really can't be bothered to get up. You have to. And so, yeah, if you haven't got, an animal there to care for or somebody else to care for that is a bigger struggle so i i believe that in those situations there are so many other people out there that are in a similar situation so many other people that are struggling we could put ourselves out there obviously safely but to actually help those other people and to make contact with people maybe that we don't even know and maybe just send a randomer a voice message on facebook and just say don't know who you are just wanted to say check in and say hi you know i think this is, is that a, not a harassment no well, i think it, this is a time where we can start to pull together as a community and share the love and yeah how absolutely. amazing is it if a stranger that you don't know just says something nice or just checks in well, we Be talked about it last week, yeah. didn't we? We talked about just smiling and making conversation with people. You know, when you do have to go into a shop safely, I will add, you know, it, it, it makes a difference. Not it, you, you will feel better for it. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, this is your mm. mental health at the moment as well. If it makes you feel better, that's not selfish. You know, no. you're just surviving like everybody else. But it's nice, it's nice when we put that out and it emulates out onto other people as well. And likewise, when they do that Because then it us, comes back, doesn't it? And then It's a wonderful thing. We're all helping each other in, in tiny little ways, or seems to be a tiny little way, but actually it's a massive way to be able to uplift our own um, emotional, mental health state. And you know keep working towards that there are so many different ways and things we can do it's like well the, the world is changing so rapidly at the moment the way that yeah. people are, uh, are, are are constructing conducting their businesses you know a lot of a lot of things are going online now because what else can people do mm. um i know that we do a lot online at the moment because we're just reaching out to people to stay connected that's yeah. all that matters is that we stay connected i think that's the biggest thing whatever you're doing in your life don't retreat away you know, yeah. because that's fear. That's fear. Believe it or not, that's fear. Throw fear to one side. Throw it under the bus and say, you know what? I'm not going to allow this. I'm not going to allow myself to become fearful and stay connected to people, friends, family. There are always ways. My mum's has late stage dementia. I haven't seen her for over a year. It's not a sob story. It happens to millions of people, you know? My mum's safe, thank goodness. She's in a care home and she's safe, okay? And I don't get to see her. But if I, need, if I want to, now and then I can pick up Zoom and they will connect me or or on or on Facebook um what is it on the on the messenger on the video yeah. and I can FaceTime her and and I can still stay connected. You know, it's how we perceive things. No, we can't be face to face with a lot of people now at the moment. It's not safe to do that. But there are other ways. And you know this, guys. You know it's not impossible to stay connected. But don't allow fear to disconnect you. Mm. That's the biggest thing here at the moment, isn't it? Very much. It is 
so so easy for us to sit and say but what's the point i can't be bothered feel sorry for yourselves you know and that's it's just destructive and it is hard it is so hard it really to is at the moment push yourself past that point of well what is the point the point is is that you're still breathing you're alive mm. you are alive today if you're listening to this you are here in the moment mm. Make it one of your greatest days. Let fear go. Yeah. Enjoy what is available to you at this time. I know it's more limited, but limitations come from yourself being fearful. And they can. And the thing is, by having the physical limitations, it gives us the opportunity to have personal growth. And here's the thing: in time, and and it won't feel like that long. Everyone will be moaning that they haven't got the time. To do anything, to do the clear this out in the house or clear out the clutter, you know, do some cooking or speak to friends or I don't have time to catch up with everybody. And, you know, yeah, sometimes it can be, you know, it's like, well, I've done nothing different. What will we talk about? Talk about rubbish. Talk about, mm. pick a subject, talk about. I, I told a friend the other day, I said, right, if you don't feel like you've got the motivation to get out for a walk, one, when you're in that moment for, I can't be bothered, force yourself to go out. It says, what I want you to do is send me a picture of somewhere that you're on, on your walk, and let's play I Spy. So you send me a picture and I spy it. I says, because it's the most simple, almost ridiculous thing to do, but I know that by going out and doing that, you pick yourself up a little bit and then share that with somebody else. You know, it doesn't have to be some amazing conversation uh, uh, about something really intellectual, but it can be. Let's just get some form of connecting going in some way, shape or form and know that we're all okay, even though it's chaos around us. And it, well, ex ex Exactly. You're, you know? you're absolutely right. The simplest things can make a big, big difference. They may not feel like it makes a big difference to you, but to somebody else, it could be massive. You know, this pandemic, Matt, has given us an amazing opportunity, an amazing opportunity to be grateful, to show gratitude for what we do have, and to take stock yeah. of what we do have. And how valuable is that? You know, our life is valuable. And it's very difficult for us to feel negative when we're showing our gratitude. Our brain is un incapable of going into a negative place when we're being grateful for what we have got. And yet that can seem really hard because as in life with the human brain, the negative stuff will overpower massively our positive stuff. It's hard work for us to train our brain to look at the positives in everything. And when we look at social media and everything, the first thing anybody will put is about the negative stuff that's going on. And then when somebody does put something positive, because we're humans and we do negative, we go, well, I bet that's rubbish. Or, oh, it's all right for them. Because we we programmed as humans to find the negative. And also we end up living quite insular lives. When we're busy, believe it or not, we live far more insular lives than we actually do in a situation like this in lockdown. Isn't that the truth? Because Yeah, because when we're busy, we're not thinking about the bigger picture, this planet, the Earth. We're just getting on with day-to-day, day-to-day things, you know? Getting that, through it. That, that bring money in, that, that survival, just survival. Mm. Well, guys, this is survival at the moment. You're still surviving, but you have more time to think about the bigger picture. I completely, you know, urge everybody, you know, like Matt said, look at things that you can do, no matter how small, like you said about working out some games, organise some quiz nights with people, go for a run, keep fit. We know people that do yoga, Pilates online, you know, there are so many different things out there that you could actually be interacting with. You know, your world hasn't shut down, it's just a different kind of world at the moment. You know, like yeah. I say, go for a walk, go for a run. You know, take your dog out, go to your horse, do whatever you want to do that makes you feel good, but obviously stay safe. We're not saying go out there and go to parties, obviously. No, absolutely. You know, I mean, the biggest... Saying just get the most out of what you can do at the moment, but don't sit there feeling sorry for yourself. 
or looking in the mirror and feeling your whole lives become a mess because you can do something about it. You are the vessel. You can make that change. Only you can make that change. We can spend our time sitting there blaming everything else, but ultimately the bitter pill to swallow is that we do to ourselves what we struggle with we do it to ourselves we do it in our own like we were talking about earlier Mm. with our overthinking and our fear so we do it to ourselves yet situations have changed okay well we accept that and we find other ways exactly in our lives but other but it's so easy for us to say i can't be bothered it's not fair all of that and we do it to ourselves and spirit so let's turn that round spirit is watching everything Mm. You know, spirit is watching everything. Everybody gets, you know, so many people I've talked to get so consumed with there being something more. They talk about the elite or the Illuminati and all of that, you know, Um, something that's governing us, controlling us. But actually, you know, the biggest controller over yourselves is yourselves. Yeah. I'm not saying all of that doesn't exist, what I've just talked about. But I'm saying what I know exists is the fact that overthinking becomes fear and fear becomes control. And that is Your control over yourselves. It's destructive. Control from fear is destructive. It's really interesting, isn't it, Matt? The whole, the whole, whole subject of fear. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about other areas that people are fearful of. But it just seems so topical that it is a, you know, what we're talking about today is more so about the situation with the pandemic. Um, it, it's it's very it's very interesting because it's out there. It's happening. Do you know what I think? It, it for me, it's as simple as this. Fear is just worrying about the unknown. Well, the unknown uh, is is simply that it is the unknown. So therefore, if we become fearful of the unknown, it's not true, is it? It's fake because we haven't got the knowledge to know what is happening. Mm. So we become fearful of the unknown because we're assuming there'll be a negative outcome as opposed to a positive outcome. Because the minute we're not sure what's going to happen, we become fearful of it. So ultimately, all of this that's going on is we're fearful because we don't know. And if we can accept that we have no control and it's okay to not know, because what I know is right in this moment, we're sat here safe. Mm. Therefore, we're okay. There's nothing to be fearful of. But the minute we put the news on, or we start reading the news, or whatever's coming in on our phones, we start to get fearful. And we get fearful mm. because it's conflicting information being thrown at us from all over the place. And you know what, guys? You know, I talk about it all the time from spirituality. Trust in your own spirituality trust in your gut you know you know if you put all the bullshit to one side you know what's right and what's wrong you've known what's right and wrong all your life that's why you don't go out and do terrible things yeah because you choose that that's not the right thing to do so trust in yourselves that as a vessel you have the answers and when different things are presented to you in this life, in this pandemic, you will have to make your own choices. For instance, if you get a call today and say, right, Mr. Johnson, Miss Johnson, come in, you can have your vaccination and you're worried about it. Well, you need to sit with yourself on that one and, and know yourself and understand and feel it in your gut what is the right thing to do because you do know what the right thing is to mm. do. And that may be to have the vaccination or not have the vaccination. It's individual, isn't but it, the right thing to absolutely, do? Absolutely, Matt. But don't allow your decisions to be based on what you read. Bring mm. it back to the very core of your being, your spirituality, in your gut, what feels right and be true and authentic to that because that's what spirit's looking for at the moment you coming from truth and there is no wrong answer ultimately there isn't but it's what's right to us as a vessel ourselves absolutely okay and this time is testing everybody no matter how spiritual you are you know it's testing i know fundamentally i know without question that my life will carry on, even if I got COVID, even if I died, I don't die, I will carry on. Mm. 
So I'm not going to allow myself to become fearful about this. But does that mean that I'm not going to wear a mask? No, of course not. I'm going to wear a mask because I'm going to protect other people. But, you know, I'm going to protect other people and of course I don't want to get the virus. However, when it comes down to it, what will be, will be. But it's how you, it's what you believe about it. It's where you're coming from with your truth that will override all of that fear when it comes to it. Mm. If it comes to that. Do you know, I just want to... Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think, I just want to make a little point, and I know we probably better come to a close fairly soon, about, um, like you're saying about, when you wear a mask and stuff. And mm. I've had a few people say to me, oh, well, that's just because you're fearful we're being controlled. So it's here's... about loving... Here's my take on that. Love, self-love for right. others as well. There are laws that we have to obey. So we're all under a degree of control, Okay. And things are put in place for our safety, whether we agree with it or not. Therefore, when I drive through the centre of town, I have to go 30 miles an hour. I'm not going to turn around and go, no, I'm free to do what I like and drive through at 60 miles an hour and risk killing somebody. So therefore, I'm not going to go into a shop without my mask on because that is now legally required to try and protect everybody. Now, whether I believe it helps or not is separate to that because that is... That is what is requested for us to do. Just like I have to have insurance on my car, I have to have tax on my car. There are certain things that we all have to abide by to get on in this world. So for me, when I look at that, it's like, okay, you know, I'd love to not have to pay car tax. I'd love to be able to just do various of the things, but this is how it is, and this is what we have to do. So... I will abide by that. I will always gel my hands and make sure I've got my mask on because that is what's being requested of us to do our bit exactly. to stay safe. Exactly. And wherever we can, we must stay safe. Yeah, absolutely. But it's about living your truth. Have a conversation with yourselves today, guys. A conversation with yourself. Feel where it comes from. Is your fear or your worry coming from your head? And what do you really ultimately feel in your gut? Because that's what matters. It's being able to see the difference between what's in your brain and what you're thinking and what's in your gut and what you're feeling. There's thinking in the brain, there's feeling in the gut. And if you come from your gut, the true core of your soul, there is your answers and you'll be absolutely okay. Perfect. It, it, it always is perfect. It's all perfect. Even when it feels it isn't perfect. It's still perfect. Okay, guys. Well, well, thanks, Matt. Thank you for sharing Thank in you. The, the, this with us. And, and now we're going to um, go home. And now we're going to go home and crack on with our truth. Indeed. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody. Take care, everyone. Take care. Stay safe. Bye for now. Bye.